This is the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 192 of This is the G Podcast. Yes, 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 yes. The NFL is back. Yes, and mo yes. <laughs> but even bigger, a whole lot of black excellence as we tape this weekend. Man, Coco Golf. U.S. Open champ. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it more toward the end of the show, but still. Whoa. Coach Prime, man, Black Excellence, 2-0 and at Colorado. Can you believe it, man? Wow. As we complete this podcast, man, both win big. Coach Prime, uh, Coco Golf, excellent, excellent, man. This is the G Podcast, episode 192. Each week we do news, politics, pop culture, that piping hot tea from the one and only Tanya B. And we're only eight, count them, <laughs> eight episodes away from... 200, the uh, 200th episode on This Is The G Podcast. We really appreciate all those who supported us, who continue to support us. And again, my big ask before episode 200, I gotta ask you to do this for me. Make sure you subscribe, either with your favorite podcast app, subscribe, you know, you know Apple, Google, uh, whichever one, Spotify, please go there. Also, you can subscribe on the YouTube channel. The big thing is make sure you allow notifications either on your podcast app or the YouTube channel. Hit that button, hit that bell on uh, on the uh, YouTube channel so it'll let you know when we have a new episode. More bonus episodes are coming up during the week. So that's why I'm asking you because I send everything out on Sunday, but during the week, I'm going to start sending out more episodes. Thank you for joining us for another week, y'all. We really appreciate you coming back each and every week. Let's go ahead and get episode 192 started. What you got, Syracuse Mike? News team, assemble! It's time for the Week in News with Syracuse Mike. With opinion polls not showing much good news for the Biden administration's economic efforts, the president spent part of Labor Day trying to sell the positive impact of his work in a speech to sheet metal workers local 19 in Philadelphia. 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. Where is it written? Where is it written? that America will not lead the world to manufacturing. I don't see it written anywhere. A new Wall Street Journal poll found that 59% of voters disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy. 61. That's the number of people indicted in Georgia on racketeering charges following violent protests against what critics call Cop City, the planned Atlanta police and firefighter training facility. Many are facing additional charges of domestic terrorism or money laundering. Georgia AG, Chris Carr. Thousands of good faith donors gave millions of their own money to a certain charitable cause, and their funds instead were spent on ammunition, surveillance materials, and a drone. Most of those indicted are not from Georgia. The former leader of the Proud Boys, Enrique Terrio, was sentenced to 22 years in prison for his part in the January 6th Capitol attack. Prosecutors wanted him locked up for 33 years. The judge didn't agree, but still handed down the longest sentence yet in a case tied to the insurrection. A federal court has struck down Alabama's latest map of congressional districts for not following a court order to comply with the Voting Rights Act. The problem, the map doesn't fix the issue and continues to dilute black voting power. It's a big case, and prosecutors say it will take four months to get through the 2020 election trial in Fulton County, covering 19 defendants, including former President Donald Trump. That estimated time frame does not include the time to select a jury. Also on Wednesday, Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee denied requests from co-defendants Sidney Powell and Kenneth Chesbro to sever their cases from Trump's. If it's an issue of time, the judge said... If we're purely considering aspects of judicial economy, which to me was the really the only valid argument here... I I think taking up two dockets for a period of four months uh, also weighs into that, as well as the voir dire process and the inconvenience to the jurors. There's also the issue of some defendants trying to move their cases to federal court, a decision that could take months. McAfee expressed concern about that possibility as well, but is sticking by the October 23rd trial date in Fulton County for now. According to court documents filed Wednesday, federal prosecutors intend to bring a new indictment against Joe Biden's son, Hunter, by the end of this month. The exact charges the president's son would face were not immediately clear. A judge refused to accept an earlier plea deal over taxes and a gun charge because of disagreements between Biden's lawyers and federal prosecutors about the terms of the deal. President Biden is focusing on one particular thing at the G20 summit in India. For him, this trip is mainly about China and its growing influence. 
Biden's first stop is New Delhi, where he'll meet with India's Prime Minister Modi, who wants to cultivate a closer relationship with the U.S. He will also make a stop in Vietnam. The G20 summit focuses on the economies of leading countries around the world. The special purpose grand jury report has been unsealed. This is the Fulton County case involving former President Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. We have now learned that the grand jury recommended more indictments than were handed down. The list includes Senator Lindsey Graham, former Senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, as well as Michael Flynn, Trump's former national security advisor. Graham says he is totally surprised to be on that list. Former Trump advisor Peter Navarro has been convicted of contempt of Congress for not complying to a subpoena from the House committee charged with investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Navarro had argued that he was immune from testimony because he was shielded by executive privilege. He also said Trump said he didn't have to show up. It took the jury less than four hours to reach a verdict. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for the headlines, man. And uh, the Newsmaker crew is here. Yes, as always, for episode 192 gotta say what's up to, to the man I, I still i know you're gonna be seeing him soon <laughs> but you still the brain supreme man i'm gonna give it to you Khalid Shabazz in the building what's happening what's happening tommy and, and can you can you share that man with the class the thing oh, you're yeah. doing yeah. share it with the class because we joke about but you got dc actually had you know gonna be yeah, doing some stuff yeah. man go so, ahead and share with the class okay yeah. sir uh, what we're doing exactly is um, having a panel discussion uh, for uh, hip hop's 50th anniversary. So um, it's going to be myself moderating. I've got Greg Street from V103, co-moderator. Um, we've got DJ Kizzy Rock as our musical talent for the evening. Wow. Um, uh, on the panel, we've got confirmed DC, the Brain Supreme, the original Brain Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've also got uh, DJ Cersei from Black Market. Um, we've got Bryce Wilson from Guru Theory. Uh, we got DJ Wiz, who's done a lot of work for Key Sweat. Um, you know, plus was very instrumental in a lot of the um, early Atlanta hip hop joints. Yep. Um, uh, we've also got Cooley C, DJ Cooley C, who um, who was part of a group called The Organization. Mm-hmm. And um, we've got a couple of other folks, some surprises. Uh, we got video interviews. Basically, uh, the panel discussion is the architects of Atlanta hip hop uh, quote uh, the the producer, excuse me, the DJ producer. Mm, yeah, yeah. So we're talking to a bunch of DJs who moved into production mm. and how their story has unfolded, you know, and that kind of thing. So it's going to be dope. It's going to be stuff, dope. Man. So as we get closer to it, definitely, um, and, and I'm sure it's going to be online too. Yeah, uh, but we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, as we get closer, we'll shout it out as well, man. Good yeah, job. Yeah, for sure. Good, Appreciate good it, man. Appreciate nah, it. I no got to represent man. Tommy. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> but hey, man, thanks, thanks again, y'all, for joining joining us for another week. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, just a couple of quick things. I'm going to go through these headlines. Um, and Mike has already mentioned a couple of these. I just want to give it some commentary, man. Uh, Lindsey Graham, come on, dog. Come on. Talking about he's surprised. <laughs> Who you love? Well, I'm surprised I was on that list. Hey, and you, you remember? You remember? Uh, what was that? You remember? I can't even. I can't even get through it with Come a straight on, face. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> yeah. You know, you remember uh, Into the Dragon, Jim Kelly, back yes. in the day. You had uh, Hand Man, bullshit yeah. Hand Man. <laughs> 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 hey, that's the first thing that came to mind when, when you said that. I just thought about uh, Jim Kelly looking at Hand Man saying, yeah, yeah, Hand I, Man. I, I feel you. I had a similar reaction, <laughs> but mine was, uh, that's that's some bullshit allowed though. <laughs> I had to give Jim, you know, I had to go old with school. That's old school yeah, back, yeah. back to Hand Man. Mm. Um, but, you know, they're going to, and, and on another note, man, they're going to have to build a new Proud Boy wing on on whatever federal prison. Good. Because but what, then again, that's not really what you want either. 
Yeah. Can you imagine the Proud Boys and the Aryans really oh, hooking up? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They Come on, man. It. This is this is getting you know that's and that's something yeah. that we don't even really think about. Mm-hmm. You know what really what is the true consequences of these yeah. people now being put in these types of scenarios? Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because you know we we're already and, and I'm, I'm going to be doing a bonus episode on the Fulton County Jail with someone um, who has uh, who, who has actually retired from mm. you know working in Fulton okay. County for years. And uh, it's one of the things that they point to as well, because when you get a lot of people, especially the gangs together in those facilities, man, you know, it's almost I mean, you know, if, if you don't understand jail life, at least watch Oz, which used to be on HBO. You know what I'm saying? At least if you're just totally oblivious, watch Oz, you know, because Oz, Oz painted a pretty accurate picture from what I remember, from what I yeah. remember. So, but anyway, I mean, what's the guy? Enrique Tarrio. And he's, mm-hmm. for, for, for the old schoolers, he's not related to Benny Tarrio, the Bernie, whatever, from Dance Fever. Right. But he Benny will be Tario. doing some dancing, though. <laughs> 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 he will be doing some dancing with the soap. So, yeah, he got 22 years and so yeah. far, you know, the, the most maximum. number of years, the maximum. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if that, but that, you know what, they actually wanted to give him 33. Right. But yeah, but uh, they, they wound up giving him 22 and, and it ain't over yet. So we'll see. The other right. thing is, man, and, and I want I want to get into you, man, get your insight into this. And I, I know the typical answer is, well, he all we got. But uh, right now, Biden's at 39 percent, which is mm-hmm. not as scary because he's kind of been 39, 40, 40, you know, within that range. But going deeper, man, this new CNN poll is kind of unveiling some cracks, some serious yeah. cracks in the foundation, in the armor as well, man. 46% of the folks say uh, that any Republican presidential nominee would be better. That's 46%, almost half the folks. Right. And also a record low share of Americans say Biden inspires confidence. So, you know, as an inspirational leader, you've only got 46% who say that. Um, right. They, well, they, you know, and, and that's a problem because if you just can't get the inspiration and a couple more things, you mm-hmm. know, 67 percent of Democrats and Democrat leaning voters say it's very or extremely unlikely that he will gain the party's nominee. Now, 67 and he's the only one. And they're, they're they, they lack hey, confidence, you know, you know. Yeah, Tommy. Hey, give like, me, let me get. Let me give you two more because yeah, yeah, because yeah, I want I want your full thoughts okay. on on this one. I want the big picture here. Sixty seven percent also say the party should nominate someone else, and that's up from March. It was at fifty four percent. The all time high was seventy five percent, but it's starting to creep back up again. And the biggest concern to leave, and, and I want you to, that's why I want you to look at this holistically, man. The biggest concern, 49% of folks say uh, his age is a concern, 49%. And then you've got another 7% saying his, his mental acuity and 7% are talking about his health. So now jump in because I want you to get that big picture. Now, go ahead. What are your thoughts? Uh, it shows that there's at least two things at play. The number one thing is that um, it's quite obvious that uh, Biden, it's it's uh, people are very much aware that whatever Biden ran on is not what he actually delivered on. Hmm. Um, so you're leaving a very bad taste in a lot of people's mouth um, for whatever landmark you know, movements that he's made in terms of job growth, uh, in terms of that, the, uh, the, the inflation reduction act, you know, um, it, it also shows that even with some of the things that he has done Mm -hmm. to help ease the day to day living of the average American, Mm -hmm. he definitely has not made that known to the masses. You know what I mean? Yeah, good point. It's like the the messaging, I mean, you hear it all the time. The the Democrats' messaging is terrible. And and for someone who has always desired this seat, 
Uh, and that has been proven through the many times that he's run. For someone who couldn't wait to get it, it's a very lackluster performance. Yeah, yeah, you I know? agree. Um, so to me, as soon as I read that article, I was thinking, man, everybody, we need to primary Marianne Williamson. You know what I mean? Really? You, you big on Marianne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I, yeah. I think that uh, I don't want to say that I'm I identify with any type of political group. You mm-hmm. know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because yeah. most of these people, um, you know, even if even if forty eight percent is great, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> that, that fifty two is just like yuck. Yeah. You know, but um, the more I listen to. Um, the progressive leaning Democrats. Yeah. I think that's kind of where middle America really lives. Now, I don't necessarily agree with every, all of their messaging, but Mm. I can see why people have been on the Bernie train. You know, I can see why people are really supporting AOC and they're the ones who are probably the most vocal about it. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of being a, a progressive, but um, the to to bring it all together really is just look this guy. You, number one, you, if you really, if you really, yeah, I like I like where she's going with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's the bottom line. I like a lot of things that she's saying. I think that um, maybe it's also because I'm really kind of an underdog type person. Oh, you're going so, under underdog. You know what I mean? She's <laughs> totally going underdog. underdog. And they're they're totally shitting all over her. And yeah. JFK for that matter. You know, RFK for that matter, whatever his name is. You know, Kennedy. That's a whole nother podcast for You me. know what I mean? I, I, but look, ugh. man, let them let them still get the kind of light that they're supposed to get. Okay. They're running for president and they yeah. put up the monies and they and they're getting, you know, some kind of, you know, dollars behind them. Then then, yeah, let's get, you know, that, that the fact that we're not even having a debate is crazy to me. Well, let me say I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw my since you throwing your names in the hat. My name in the hat is Julian Castro. I'm mm. a cast. I'm, I'm a I'm a fan of Castro, man. And I like him because uh, he has served. You know, in politics, you okay. know, and, and he's done well, you know, as a representative in Texas. He has been on a cabinet. He mm-hmm. was on uh, Obama's. He, I think he was the HUD director for okay. Obama uh, yeah, for, yeah. for a term back in the day. And he's just a common sense cat. The other thing mm-hmm. is, I think it's time. I think it's time for uh, a Hispanic, a brown president, you know. Uh, but but beyond that, uh, you know, he and his brother are twin brothers. So sometimes I get them mixed up. But. But he is, uh, without a doubt, uh, you know, I think he is um, a great option. He's an option that we should consider. And I hope okay. he, when he ran in the big, pro, you know, before uh, before 2020, when, when Biden was running with all the other uh, potential candidates, uh, I was more impressed with him than I was with Kamala. Mm. I mean, honestly, I had hoped that uh, Biden would choose him because I thought he was he was better. Um, I mean, even even to the point where and, and you talk about progressive arguments, man, he you know, he even tried to make an argument for reparations. And I'm not saying that you can win on that, but at least, you know, he understands mm-hmm. the, the, the big picture. And, and, right. and it's just like, you know, the other thing about age, I'm not an age, just I mean, we're both brothers over 50. So I'm not sitting here saying, you know, if someone is capable, but they're of a certain age or over a quote unquote certain age that people perceive as quote unquote too old that they shouldn't run. No, I mean, if you're capable and you can still do the job, then great. But I right. do think like when when you look at Pelosi, who just announced that she's running again uh, after 20 terms, you know, and somebody was posting on Twitter Hey, you know, uh, Pelosi, we need you back. And they were showing all these homeless people on the streets of San Francisco. And I said, I said to myself, mm-hmm. and I also posted, <laughs> but I did say this. I said, well, okay, she's been doing this for 20 terms and you still got a homeless problem. You still have a significant homeless problem. So why are you asking her back? 
you know, if you if, if there's a problem, she should have fixed it. She's had 20 terms to fix it. Right. Or at least she's had the last 10 terms. So, you know, I look at she was the she was the leader. Yes, she was. She's the incumbent. So my my point is, when I look at what's happening in San, in South Carolina, I, I look at what's his name, James. Uh, he'll come to me in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, our black representative in South Carolina, um, Clyburn. When I look at Clyburn, okay. who's been right. there forever, when I look at what Mitch McConnell, buffering Mitch, is doing in Kentucky, and and he's talking about running again. You know, when I look at what's going on with Pelosi, when I look at even what's going on in Atlanta in the 13th district with a guy who doesn't even come in to do a town hall meeting, you know what I'm saying? When I look at this, all these cats have been there so long and are virtually invisible because they can no longer keep up with the pace that's required in the streets. I have to ask, you know, it's money and power. I have to ask, is it is it truly about serving the people yeah. or, is, or is it about serving your best interest? So I, I, I hate to get on my soapbox about that, man. But, you know, he may be all we have right now, but I don't think politics in general, not just the Democrats, Republican. I don't think they're looking to the future for leadership. And it's not the guy who's with these these pot these crack pots, you know, like the guy who wants to raise the voting age to 25. You know, I'm not even going to say his name on my podcast. You know who he is. Uh, get somebody reasonable within at least a millennial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, coming to Gen X. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? at least. Yeah. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that, man. I mean, it's it's just. It's just, I mean, I hate to, you know, even on this podcast, I hate saying it is what it is. Oh, it is what it is, man. He's our only choice, man. Yeah, Yeah, aren't you tired of that? And see, I I think the real of it is um, that we bought into that. Yeah. And the reason, you know, why, the reason why Mm. Biden can do what he's doing now in terms of the way they're positioning him as the only incumbent is because we bought into this you know if you're not you know the the democratic nominee or the republican nominee then then you got no choice you got no choice you got no voice you got no nothing you know you get no shine we have choices (laughs) we don't have to live like this you know, well, yeah, and and, and the uh, thing is, uh, right now, Talib, and I'll say this, and I'll throw it back to you. It's fear. Mm-hmm. It's a sense of it is if you don't do it, there's Trump, and people go, "Oh my God, right, not him, right." But so I, I think possibly, potentially, that's why I want him out of the race. Yeah, because because I think if he's gone. It opens up the discussion again, but right, right. now the thing He's is the eight hundred pound gorilla. Right. <laughs> I think and, you I know think... this is something too. I was talking with somebody else about this. You know, they're talking about the term limits. That that's the big talk now. After buffering Mitch, you know, everybody's hollering about term limits. Yeah. Um, big money is so invested in Congress mm-hmm. right now that. Even if there were to be term limits, all that means is that the corruption would amp up so high because they had to get it within this short time period. Mm. You know what I mean? What is going to be our happy medium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if we can really get, I mean, you know, of course, it's never going to happen because this is the this is the worst example. America is really the worst example of capitalism I've ever seen. It is. I mean, (laughs) but but you know what? But it's like this. You know, when I when I look at what's going on in Africa and I mm-hmm. look at the, 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 the coup issues right. that are happening, um, you know, in in uh, in Niger, mm-hmm. uh, Begon and, and several other African countries, the African nations, mm-hmm. um, you look at the corruption <laughs> that caused the coup. You know what I mean? You, you, you yeah. don't just look at the fact that, OK, the military took over. But then you look at the guys who were in the lead who have been leading the country for like 20 years. And when they go into the castles that they lived in, all this bags and bags and bags of the people's money. 
Right. You know, um, when you look at the potential for corruption and, and, and you know, I think in America, in a lot of cases, you know, people deny the fact that corruption exists among the people who lead the country. And I have to say to them that, you know, why you said it when we, last mm. episode, we were talking about why else would they want to run and have the stress right. after all these years when they've amassed all this wealth? Right. You know, Pelosi's a, mil- a, a, a multimillionaire. Mean, a, again, you get addicted to the money. Yeah, that's you it. You get addicted to the money. And You're feeding generations. Right. Your, exactly. your generations are, fe- you know, her family. Yeah. But, you her, know, here's the thing. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things to, there's so many things to touch on. You know, if mm-hmm. you look at African countries and you want to talk about the corruption. Yeah. And, you, and I don't look, let me say, let me, let me say, let me be clear. Uh huh. You know, I understand why. And I support, in a lot of cases, the fact that these coups occur. Yeah. But 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 it's not something that's only, you know, it's it's not just an African continent problem. It's right. No, it's everything. It's a world problem. It's a world it, it, problem. But here's the thing: I only, is, those are people of color. You know, those, right. you know, my my black people. So I, I bring it up. Yeah. Right. The only thing I really wanted to touch on with that thing is yeah. that in other countries. They know that the corruption exists. Yes. You know, you can take care of the policemen, you know, you can <laughs> she's like, wash it. you know, <laughs> get out of the ticket real quick. And depending on if you do if you know you're doing something crazy, have some cash on you. Yeah. You know, um, so the corruption is blatant. Yeah. Look at and look everybody at look at Russia knows man. and accepts it. In America, we're still <laughs> fed this propaganda like the corruption is not here. You know, yeah, Clarence yeah. Thomas has just released oh. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? And it's like, shame, on, son, son. You don't know that song too much, too little, too late. <laughs> that dude. Uh, so you know, it's it's a, it's a lot of things that come into play. And again, speaking of Biden, yeah. again, if Biden doesn't really get his messaging together. Yeah. Which I can't really see happening because we we're you know time is running short and people are already you're not going to be able from where he is right now he would have to turn about thirty percent yeah but you know what you know what they should do to leave I think all these Hollywood directors and all these folks in Hollywood ain't working they're not working right now he needs to go to Rob Reiner <laughs> so, okay, I'm just telling you. Some of these outspoken directors who know, I mean, they know. Look, I mean, well, Ronald Reagan was an actor. That's what I'm saying. But I'm not saying he should be, <laughs> Reiner should be president. But Reiner, these directors know how to move audiences. Look, even like, hey, even what's his name? Quentin Tarantino. If man. a lot of these cats, they, they can't do much now with the strike. Anyway. He needs, <laughs> he needs to go to, to Hollywood. Sheen. He needs to talk to Martin Sheen and Dennis Haber. <laughs> the West Wing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, dude. Hey, just go hire the whole staff. Uh, what's his name? I forgot his name, uh, the director. It'll come to me in a minute. Just go hire the whole staff <laughs> of the West Wing. Oh, my God. They won Emmys. They right. know. <laughs> Hey, hey, they're gonna go to hey, you know, they know. On TV. Here's the story. Here's the story. We got a president. Everybody thinks it's too old. Hey, and the country, you know, we got this other guy. You know what I'm saying? Just, just write the script. <laughs> yeah, that's what they should do. That was a good one. Hey, we just solved it, brother. We just solved the problem. Man. We just, we yeah. just solved Biden's problem. Hopefully somebody, hopefully, uh, maybe Keisha Lance Bottoms will get this. And she'll take it. <laughs> Mayor Keisha. Yeah, it'd be so, so simple. I like, hey, by the way, I like, Ke- Ke- Mayor Keisha, if you're listening, we love your locks. Keep those locks, girl. Hang in there. <laughs> you got the locks. Yeah. Hey, hey, let's let's do this, man. Tilly, what's your story of the week, man? What's your big story? Oh, man. Okay. Um, let me get my notes out. Because Uh-oh. you know that the G20 <laughs> is about to become the G21. Oh, the African Union has been admitted as a full member, um, as opposed to just being South Africa. Yep. So 55 more countries now come on board. Uh, 40, uh, 50. It's a, total, uh, it's a total of 55 members mm-hmm. uh, that now have joined the board. And mm-hmm. you know, it's like 
when you look at it, you got to be like, really? It is not always been. I mean, G, the G20 has been around since 99. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, really? It's only been South Africa. Yeah. But you know what? Let me say, man. And and I am. Let me raise my eye. Let me get my people's eyebrow. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I am thrilled that that's happening. But you know, you know what Biden's number one target and question is going to be? What's that? As he, I mean, and Mike said this in the mm -hmm. news report. His question is about China. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you know why? Yeah. I mean, I think, quite frankly, that he's saying that because China is so involved in Africa. And mm -hmm. I used to be very skeptical of China's involvement in right. Africa. But honestly, it's it's you know, it's kind of working out in a lot of these situations where there's not, you know, a corrupt leader. When you've got people who understand that there is need for partnership, yeah. it's working out because it's helping the infrastructure. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's bringing up the level of their technology. And, you know, if if we're not it's just like, you know, America dropped the ball with Najir, right. you know, in, in terms of the, the coup. Yeah. Um, you know, if if we're if we're so focused on Ukraine to where we can't give the African nations the support and China steps in, whose fault is that? But, you know, we're also boycotting a few um, um, or sanctioning a few African nations because of the um, of the LGBT laws. But you know what? Here's the deal. Uh, I get that. I understand that. But uh, we ain't checked Ukraine lately. <laughs> Man, what they doing over in Russia? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's not like the European nations are squeaky clean, you know, when it comes down, you know, to, you know, supporting LGBTQ plus rights either. Right. You know, so. So, again, um, you know, and plus, you know, human rights issues, uh, you know, that that kind of. You know, newsflash, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, again, I, I always say when we were going through, you remember back, maybe God, we were, I was doing the GP3 podcast and the string of black men were being shot down, <sighs> damn near executed by police. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we were talking about on the podcast was, you know, we were saying, look, what, you know, we need to if, if we're not getting support in the U.S., then we may we may need to be taking this to the UN, you know. And Malcolm did that back in the day, where Malcolm was looking at the civil rights movement. He's looking at, you know, the black struggle in America, and and you know, Malcolm advocated for taking uh, black Americans issues, not you know, not just to the Supreme Court, but also taking it to the UN. You know, so we're not squeaky clean. Go ahead, man. You're muted. Let yeah. me mute yourself. Um, yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, this is this is good news in, 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 a, in a lot of respects, you know. Yeah, because, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to see it. I'm happy yeah. to see it. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they get, they, you know, they start to get better with it, you know, what I mean? yeah. because yeah. the corruption is so blatant. You know, yeah. a lot of these countries. Um, the whole thing about China, China knew what to do and when they came in. I mean, yeah. and, and, you know, I, I don't, you know, Kenya, in Kenya, they put a railroad that connected, that connects um, uh, Mombasa to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. There was never, you know, there were roads, you know, kind of that did that. But, you know, to be able to take that six hour ride, on the yeah. on the train, you know, it's great. Um, I'm all for economic development. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes when when there's respect, you yeah. know. But yeah. there's a lot of you know these the, these new Chinese, these new Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know, the new Chinese they are not very respectful. Yeah, but all. I'm gonna say this, man, and and I get I get your point. But I do say this, um, when I can drive 20 miles and go through West Atlanta or South Atlanta or go through Clayton County and go through th some of these cities and see uh, such a, uh, I don't want to say a, a difference in, in the disparities and in, in even have not having the health care, the health care systems move out. Mm 
right. or even even the grocery stores. These areas are food deserts. Yes. You know, we can't fix or get our representatives to fix stuff that's happening here. Right. That creates healthcare deserts and food deserts in America. Yes. So, you know, far be it for me. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, there but for the grace of God go I. Mm. You know, when it comes down you know, to the U.S. in terms of criticizing a lot of these countries. and But you're absolutely right. If there's right. respect, right. when there's respect, and, and I heard a leader over in South Africa, they said, look, we understand that, that China has issues, but when leaders go to China w- instead of carrying bags for money, it's, if they go to China with ideas mm. for fixing the country, right? it's a different negotiation. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Good point. Good point. You know, I'm. You know, I'm. A, I'm gonna lighten it up, man. I'm gonna lighten it up before we get out of here. Yeah, we need to. And, and and I've got I've got two things, man. My two quick things. Number one, do we really need bongos for Megan, Megan, um, and Cardi? <laughs> do we really need that? Did we re- did we really need it, Mr. DJ? <laughs> Did you leave me? <laughs> Yo, man. I, I... You know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Most of y'all know what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. But did we really need bongos? No. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Megan right. Carr, that's my one thing. The other thing is, you know, you know it's the NFL, man. It's the NFL season. I feel bad for Kansas City Chiefs fans. And let me say this. My boy, Kadarius Tony. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's from Mobile. Okay. We got a lot of folks on this podcast who listen from Alabama from Mobile. Some of my best friends are in Mobile. But if you drop how many four out of five targets in a game? Yeah. And your team drops eight passes and you won the Super Bowl last year. I got to start monitoring some offshore offshore accounts. I got to start looking. <laughs> I, got to, I got to call the FBI. I got to get some investigation. Cause Man. come on, dude. Well, Cause there is Tony. I've dude, seen, anybody seen know his before. mama, daddy, cousin, uncle? <laughs> <laughs> and I heard I heard he jumped off Twitter. I heard he jumped off Twitter because they were lighting him up. But I'm gonna, yeah. I just wanted to say that. Number yeah. one, did we need bongos? <laughs> Megan Cardi, did we really need bongos? Uh, did we really need that? <laughs> I told you already. You know, I don't want chocolate. I don't want chocolate in my peanut butter. <laughs> I don't always want chocolate in my peanut butter or peanut butter in my chocolate. But anyway, some of y'all oh, do. Some of y'all got to have the peanut butter and the chocolate. Some of you just got to have. It. That's, greedy, the only way, that's, that's the only way they can listen to music. They got to have chocolate in their peanut that's butter. Greedy, and peanut butter in their greedy. Chocolate. That's greedy. That's greedy. <laughs> hey, man, but, but, you know, <laughs> we'd love your thoughts, y'all. Go to castropolis.net. Uh, go to the people poll. And yeah, I mean, you know, I guess that's my out of all the important stuff we talked about. Did we really need bongos? But anyway, <laughs> Castropolis.net. Somebody go. I know. Hey, let me tell you, somebody going to come in the people poll. Well, yeah. yeah, you know, we need that we, Cardi P. Actually, I know. we need to find out that, that we need to have the recap of the people poll next week. If somebody, <laughs> you know, somebody, you know, somebody, <laughs> out of all the important stuff right. that we've talked about. Right. They only going to talk about bongos. bongos. Yeah. But, you know, I will play back the best. Hey, man, big <laughs> thanks. Appreciate you, man. Let me give it up. <laughs> give it up for Tlaib, man. Tlaib Shabazz, Brain Supreme, man. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Brain Supreme, too. Right. Uh, right yeah. <laughs> brain, brain Supreme, air apparent. Uh, all right, y'all, man. Appreciate you, Tlaib. Let's take a break, man. We'll come back with Tanya B and the T. Appreciate you, man. Peace. More. This is the G Podcast. After the break. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's Tommy B from This Is The G Podcast. We are now halfway through 2023. And if you've been thinking about starting your own podcast uh, in 2024, I'd love to have a chat with you. The Castropolis Podcast Network is currently accepting new shows. And if you have a clear vision and a unique voice, let's get in touch. Reach out to me at info at castropolis.net or visit the website castropolis.net. Simply click on the Contact Us button. So go to castropolis.net, click on Contact Contact us and just leave me a message. I'm Tommy B from This Is The G Podcast, and I can't wait to help you start your very own podcast journey today. Now then, children, it's time for tea. 
It's tea time, y'all. Sipping the tea with Tanya B. All right, all right, all right. It is time for tea, children. This is your girl, Tanya P. We're about to sip some GT right here on This Is A G Podcast. And I'm telling you, if you miss a cup of tea with me, you miss a lot. Go to the YouTube channel. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. All right, let's just get right to it. I hope this isn't true, Tommy B, but I'm hearing that there may be an alleged new baby mama and a possible baby number 13 on the way for Nick Cannon. I thought I told you to go over there and sit down, fold the laundry and clean out your house. Now, Rihanna and ASAP Rocky have a new baby. Joining baby RZA is, I can't even say it, Riot Rose. They can explain that later. All right. Now, we got to say shout out to all these young tennis pros at the 2023 U.S. Open who are making history. Although he is no longer competing, Maryland's Francis Tiabo made history because he was the first African-American male to reach the semifinal since Arthur Ashe in 1972. Are you kidding me? That was a long time ago. We've got Atlanta born Ben Shelton did a great great job but he was defeated along with Chicago metro area tennis phenom Madison Keys but we still we counting on as I record this DJ Tommy B and Vi can we just hold on and lay Coco Guff on the office at the five thousand black to black Baptist churches of Atlanta do you know she's the first American teenager to, to uh consecutively reach the quarterfinal since Serena Williams and that in itself is history again Five honor to everybody. You gave it your all. We wish them the best, and they will make more tennis history in the future. But we got to give them five on it. Not giving five on it to some of the dumb donkeys of the week. Kanye West and his nearly naked wife have been banned from Italy. Do you know? Forget the P Funk part. She was actually giving him a <clears throat> professional service, allegedly, out in public. They don't play that in Italy. Ask Whoopi Goldberg, okay? Mm-mm-mm. Tyrese, another one. He's on his apology tour, but he's also promoting the Fast and Furious coming to the Peacock streaming service. I still say, Tyrese, stay off social media. Do you know, Tommy B, he went to a prominent radio show in New York with a prominent New York DJ and said something greasy about his wife. And the DJ said, Tyrese, I should punch you in your mouth. Keep my name out your mouth and my wife's too. Tyrese, please, you are doing way too much. Everybody's giving you the side eye. Please go make a record and just forget about it. October 13th, Tommy B, you watching this? Another Jamie Foxx movie is hitting Amazon Prime. Jamie and uh, the actor Tommy Lee Jones should be interesting. They're on the Jamie Foxx. He still is a bankable commodity tour. Gotta say, happy anniversary to my Boston Beantown homies new edition. It's been 40 years Tommy B they hit the scene back in 1983 look I was there so you know mother got stories like I said but anyway we do wish them all the best and uh have you seen Mike Bivens 617 Mike Bivens documentary it's on this all black network and it, <laughs> there's no A or no C it's just all black without those two letters and I'm not paying for it anyway did he hmm, did he or did he not have an ulterior motive because he just gave all the bad boy artists such as Mace 112 and others their music publishing back. But folks are giving him the side eye and saying it's a publicity stunt for this new album he's got coming out next month because the last one only sold two copies. But I just want to know Puffy, Diddy, Love, whatever your name is this week, what took you so long to do the right thing? You know, he's getting this Global Icon Award at the MTV Video Music Awards tonight, and I just say, who watches award shows and anybody care? Not me! Nor do I want to see who is going to perform with Puffy at this so-called bad boy reunion, because we know how that goes. Well, I told you about um, Whoopi Goldberg in Italy. Well, she went to Italy on vacation, and she came down with COVID for the third time. That's why she missed the 27th season opener of The View. Whoopi, you can't be out here tootsie rolling. These COVID numbers are rising faster than the, the press can even tell us. So just be careful and pay attention. All right, actor Jonathan Majors now. You know, he was arrested back in March for allegedly assaulting the girlfriend who later said that she was not telling the honest truth. Then she fled the country. He's due back in court again next week. Have these allegations permanently derailed his career? Can he bounce back? And how long is making good going to stay around? Oop. Ah, uh, let's see. Till the money runs out? Oop. Yes, I said it. I uh, want to say Taylor Swift, take this 
Swift kicking the eh because Beyonce's Renaissance Tour is now the highest grossing tour by a female artist in history is not you, Tay-Tay. You know, Beyonce's going to start working in the next month on new music with Grammy legend Nile Rodgers in the Dream. Well, they, the three of them won a Grammy for the song Cup It, so I guess they're going to do Cup It Part 2. Now, if you are a certain age, Tommy B, I know I am, you might be too. You may remember that there were very few black actors on Broadway from the 50s, 60s, and they started getting a little bit of visibility into the 70s. But in 1961, the late, great Ozzie Davis wrote a play called Pearly Victorious. It went to Broadway. It actually was the show that put Melba Moore on the map in the 70s. It was just called Pearly. But now there are some people that believe another revival is going to be successful. How about Alan Alda, who we know from the 70s show MASH, Kerry Washington, Samuel L. and Latanya Jackson, Felicia Rashad, and Leslie Odom Jr., who we know from the original cast of Hamilton. They are putting their money behind a revival of Pearly Victorious. I just want to know, will they include Melba Moore in some capacity? That would be nice now she's getting her flowers. Now, inquiring minds want to know, Tommy B, has singer Robin Thicke relapsed? He was captured on video recently, stumbling out of a club, and his baby mama was trying to get him into the car. Now, she has given birth to three small babies by him, and he might be the fourth child. Now, if you think about it, he really has not had a hit record in a while. Let's call a thing a thing. And the last thing we really knew him for was that big lawsuit with the Marvin Gaye estate for uh, blurred line. So uh, hopefully he can unblur his vision and get it back together. That's all I got. Ain't got no more y'all. It's your girl Tanya B. This is how we sip this GT each and every Sunday on. This is the G podcast. Check us out on the YouTube channel until then be safe. Be kind of remember Rona is still real y'all. Okay. What you watching this week, Tommy B? Thanks for that, T. Tanya B. Yes, man. The Shy, Episode 6, Season 6. It is titled Boys to Men. Tough decisions. My prediction comes to an unfortunate fruition. Mm -mm -mm. Big spoilers ahead are coming, y'all. You may want to pause till you watch. All right, so Keisha and Emmett have it out over the money he's been, quote unquote, stashing. That money's found. Emmett, dude, come on. You ain't even try to hide the money. <laughs> so, all right, so he goes back to Duda, takes another shot, fails again. But he makes a promise to Duda about their business arrangement. And let me say this, dude, you can't pay the gangsters back. They're going to hit you with the interest, man. And I got to say to the shot writers, stop writing these ass kickings in for, for Emmett. Oh, my God. Give him, give him some strength or something, some, some superpowers. Woo. The, the fans question Victor over a photo of he and Duda together before Q's body was found. And he confesses to Fatima that he was an accomplice. He also approaches Pastor Stanley for guidance and prayer. Uh, he confesses to Rob, of all people, that Duda killed Q. And now Rob tells Alicia, his mom, you know, Crazy Lynn Whitfield. And, you know, Crazy Lynn Whitfield does what Crazy Lynn Whitfield always does. She makes her demands. So let's see how that turns out. It's also a graduation day for the kids. Bakari takes an ass whipping. Just dude is just handing out ass whippings this season. Okay. Um, then Bakari goes to Lene for forgiveness. Lene's brother takes him in his truck for a talk, which turned out a whole lot better than I thought. He might be an ally. Bakari's sister Brittany finds him. Um, she's tough, but she might be another ally. So Bakari might have the opportunity between Lene's brother and his sister to kind of build his own little gangster empire. We'll see. Papa and Pastor Stanley talk it out on the Papa's Pulpit podcast, and man, the foreshadowing is for days. Mm -mm -mm. Dre and ex Monica get complicated or even more complicated in the girl circle, and, and Kev breaks the news that he's moving to L.A., and Nina criticizes him for this L.A. decision, and, and I gotta ask, and, and I love your feedback, are Dre and Nina on the rocks? Is that it? Because they're going in opposite directions. You can see it. Papa and Kenya discuss her son. Uh, Papa and Pastor Stanley have it out about Kenya and her son. And then Papa, as all boys do, when they have it out with their pops, they make that bold move out the house. They move out the house when the Papa says, if you leave, don't come back. Papa stepped out. The boys join the men's group. Kevin gives the class graduation speech for 2023. And finally, <sighs> My prediction about Pastor Stanley comes true. What will this mean? I'd love y'all's feedback. What will this mean for the direction of Papa's character? Could he fall more under Bakari's influence 
or do you think he'll become or take up the mantle of his father for the church? We'll see. All previous Shot Talk blogs are available at castropolis.net. Just go back, revisit my comments, my commentary. Love your comments and commentary. You can hit the orange button, the people poll button, leave a message, or you can just write it. Just go into the blog and, and leave your comments. Don't don't cost you nothing. It's free. See you next week. Oh, yeah, as always, big thanks to Syracuse Mike, Tanya B. Vi, Talib, author and political analyst, Harold Michael Harvey. Uh, big thanks to the crew, Millennial Nick, uh, Lady J, Regia, Music by K-Dub, all those who help us make it happen every single week, every Sunday. Don't forget, 6 p.m., you can stream us first. All the links are on social media. Plus, if you go to castropolis.net, everything is there. So it's real easy for you to share us with a friend. Just share us. Don't cost you nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, my PSA for the week, and we needed good news this weekend. Uh, congrats to Coach Prime. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The win over Nebraska. He's now 2-0, and making the Buffaloes, uh, man, the surprise hit of the NCAA, but really the surprise hit of the sports world. So I got to give you that. Also, Coach Prime's son is is being talked about as a potential Heisman candidate. So kudos, Coach Prime. Good stuff. Keep up the great work. Keep up the great work, dude. And, uh, you know, and, and I got to say this, um, you know, people, I think they counted her out. I don't know if they counted her out or not, but Atlanta's Coco Golf, man, wins her first Grand Slam title and becomes the youngest American to win the tournament since Serena Williams in 1999. And, and I just have to say, with all the darkness, all the crazy stuff going around us, let's take a moment and really celebrate this light. Good stuff. No matter where it comes from. Even, you know, I know a lot of you don't take the sports world uh, seriously, but man, let's just go ahead and celebrate it wherever we can get it. So all that black excellence this weekend. Congrats. Appreciate you all for supporting the show each week. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn on notifications to get the bonus episodes during the week because we're up in our game in a few weeks, y'all. When fall hits, we're going to be doing more episodes every week. And with that, episode 192 is in the can. Have a great week, y'all. Have an excellent week. Just black excellence, all kind of excellence. Peace and power to the people. You've been listening to the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. The G Podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.